hi friends welcome back to my channel today's video i wanted to do something a little bit different the weather here in rome this weekend is cloudy and it's supposed to rain i was going to go on a walk with you through the historical center but instead i thought i would stay home and walk you through the history of italian beauty trends and ideals throughout time. I love history and I find these things to be so interesting so I hope you don't mind a little bit of a different video today and let's get started. We all know that Italians are surrounded by beauty. Their country is so gorgeous. They're really spoiled. If you've ever been here you know what I'm talking about. Their piazzas, their architecture, their churches and basilicas their art and history, even their food and wine, it's all beautiful. <laughs> and I've had this theory for a long time that this is the reason why Italians are so quick to compliment other people. It's because they're so used to seeing and appreciating and admiring beauty. I am fascinated by history and looking at how things change over time or how history repeats itself and it's really interesting to see these patterns and these trends in the ideal body shape or the ideal beauty standard throughout time just like you see in this photo here. There has just been such a high emphasis and standard on beauty in Italy and it's been at the heart of Italian culture for centuries. They have this appreciation for the small details and really the small details are what make it so magnificent in the end result. They even have a phrase called la bella figura, which means the beautiful figure or beautiful behavior, and it's a way of life for Italians. It describes taking care of your appearance, but also it's a philosophy about how you live and making a good impression to others and behaving with class and grace. So let's rewind the clock and go all the way back to ancient Rome. Both for men and women, the Romans inherited the Greek beauty standards with the ideals of symmetry and harmony. The way that we can kind of guess today of what they found to be beautiful is if we look back at their art and sculptures. So the ideal beauty for a woman was small and thin but robust constitution, narrow shoulders, more pronounced hips, wider thighs, and small breasts. Smooth white skin was very important to Roman women. They would even sleep at night with a mask on called a tectorium and they would remove it the next day with milk. They exfoliated their bodies by smearing olive oil or they would use calcium carbonate or pumice stones to make everything really smooth. Smelling good was really important for them and they were known for using scented oils like cedar, myrrh, pine, lily, saffron, and violet and roses. Wealthier women or women in the aristocracy were known for taking milk baths and by the first century AD, white skin was the most important thing. Many women would use this thing called bean powder to put everywhere and make them look extremely white and other women would actually use this toxic powder, lead powder, to make their skin look whiter. For centuries, Roman women considered mahogany hair or red hair to be the most beautiful. But after Julius Caesar brought slaves from Gaul or from up north down to Rome, blonde hair became the most envied. And this is probably when they also started to envy blue eyes. And so many women started trying to dye their hair with vinegar or with saffron. They would even sprinkle gold dust onto their hair. It's even been recorded that people would use pigeon droppings to change the color of their hair. And if they didn't have enough hair, they would have wigs made from their German slaves. The hairstyle was pretty simple. It was a middle part collected into a bun. Many women would put their hair into braids. And it's recorded that married women would put their hair into this hairstyle with six braids. Usually younger women had long hair, 
the slave girls had shorter hair and the older women would have really long hair but they would keep it into a bun and they would put a bunch of golden accessories into their hair. So there's also beauty standards with men. The ideal Roman was defined as tall, which back then was only about 5'7", muscled and toned with long strong legs and a tanned skin tone. The ideal face was high and broad forehead and wide eyes, a strong nose with symmetry and a powerful jaw. Strong and thick hair was a sign of manliness and especially curly hair was considered very handsome. And again around the first century is when blonde hair started popping up. Many emperors around this time were described as blonde. So that's one way we know that this was an ideal for them. Also being bald was so negatively viewed that even Julius Caesar was recorded for combing his hair over and it's recorded that Caligula hated to see a man with luxurious hair. By the third century BC men would shave their beards or cut their hair almost every day and beards didn't really become popular until the time of Emperor Hadrian. It's also recorded that men would use skincare products to treat wrinkles and freckles or blemishes, but using too much and shaving too much was considered too feminine, so they had boundaries and limits on how much they would do. Okay, now let's move to the Renaissance, which is one of my favorite time periods to study and look back at. So Renaissance body ideals for females was pretty strict. The perfect woman was supposed to have long, wavy, golden blonde hair, dark brown eyes, and a high white forehead. White skin was still very fashionable, but it couldn't just be white. It had to have hints of pink with rosy cheeks or just rosiness in general. They loved fleshy arms and legs, broad hips, and a round stomach. These were all really desirable. Actually, thinness was sort of a problem in the Renaissance times, and it was not what you wanted to be. Being a little bit more plump and fleshy was a sign of health and that you had enough money to feed yourself and that you were fit to be a good mother things like that. So these were part of the Renaissance ideals portrayed in the art that we can still see today. So let's fast forward to the glamorous movie stars of the 50s and 60s. I think you automatically think of Sophia Loren. So for this time period, you think of old Hollywood glam, like Marilyn Monroe as well, or Bridget Bardot. These women were extremely hourglass shaped. They weren't super thin. They had really teeny tiny waists, but they were also very curvy. Their makeup was simple and classic. They had classic and well-kept hair, and the way that they dressed was typical 50s and 60s style. But if you look at Sophia Loren's body, she is plump and fleshy and she has curves and a little bit of a tummy. She's not super thin. She's very womanly and that was definitely the beauty ideal of this time period. And then we can even fast forward a little bit to the 90s and we see Monica Bellucci, one of the most gorgeous women I've ever seen. She's very similar to that of Sophia Loren with being very thin, having a small waist, but also being very curvy and voluptuous. I think that those ideals and beauty trends stayed pretty consistent. These women had high cheekbones, that small or Roman nose. They had long hair, soft lips, other soft features like the apples of their cheeks. They had a very romantic look to them. Being Mediterranean, these women have very distinct characteristics. They have a very intense gaze, they have olive skin, dark hair, dark eyes. And even today, I think Italians prefer the more natural look as opposed to like the United States. They don't do as much plastic surgery or fillers or Botox like we do in the States. They have this appearance of being very strong, but at the same time being very feminine. So I wanted to talk a little bit about beauty trends and standards that you'll see today in both men and women. So let's talk about men for a little bit. Italian men are very, very pretty. <laughs> they care a lot about how they look. I think it's also worth noting that a lot of these opinions are subjective, obviously, especially if you ask different generations, because different generations will have completely different opinions. If you ask the older generation or someone like my 
my boyfriend's father's age, he'll have a completely different opinion compared to if I ask an 18 year old. For example, the older generation still really looks down on tattoos and piercings, whereas the younger guys, they have a lot of tattoos and piercings and it seems to be perfectly normal. So those are just some slight differences in the age differences. Italy is widely considered to be the pinnacle of men's fashion. So you'll see a lot of men who are accustomed to wearing well tailored suits. They look very put together. They really care a lot about their outfits looking very nice. You'll see those styles like wearing loafers without socks and the pants that are a little bit above the ankle and more form-fitting. You'll see a lot of those styles here in Italy. You'll also see men that are not afraid to wear colors like pink and purple, colors that are usually more feminine. Italians really play around with colors and they're not afraid of them. They have this term called sprezzatura, which is like a studied carelessness regarding style. Like they have this nonchalance and this effortless that's usually associated with male attractiveness. Their style is definitely just very cool. Italian men are also really comfortable with grooming. They take care of their beards and their eyebrows and they get their hair, you know, cut at the barber often. Or a lot of them now I've noticed have longer hair, longer beards. It's like the very manly look. And also, Western Europe comprises of 21% of men's skincare sales worldwide. So these men are not afraid to do a little bit of moisturizing, exfoliating, they take care of their skin, and they groom themselves. <laughs> so lastly for this video, I just wanted to talk a little bit about my own observations of the differences between the United States and Italy. So in the USA, in the States, we wear a lot of makeup and we really do our hair. But then when it comes down to our outfits, we really don't care that much. The whole athleisure look or like, you know, just comfortable casual, we, we don't really care. We wear leggings and Birkenstocks and call it a day. And I'm not knocking that look. I think it's really comfortable and I think it's cute, but you will not see a lot of people dressing like that here unless they're a tourist or they're literally like done from the gym. But even then, Italians will bring their gym clothes and change at the gym. And before they leave the gym, they'll change back into their regular clothes. They don't wear athleisure and workout clothes like we do in the States. It's just, they don't do it. <laughs> and then if I compare that to Italy, I would say that a lot of girls don't do their hair. It's very natural. They don't, you know, use the curling iron or the straightener every day like we do. And their makeup is super minimal and natural. You won't see a lot of full face makeup or falsies. They just don't do that. That whole like makeup YouTuber look is definitely an American look. Um, here it's simple. Maybe a little bit of mascara and eyeliner and um, they just embrace their natural hair texture. And instead what really matters to them is dressing well. So you'll see a lot of very stylish, very classy, very trendy and cute outfits when you're out and about. And in fact, that always makes me feel like a slob because I don't have a lot of nice outfits. Instead, I focus more on like my hair and makeup because I'm American. And when I go out, I do compare myself to not having as nice clothes and things like that. So those are where the priorities are a little bit different between the United States and Italy. Here you'll see a lot of women using gold to accessorize with and what's really important is a nice pair of sunglasses. And as far as figure, I would say in the United States we really value and emphasize thinness. People have this obsession to be thin or to look like the Kardashian figure that's like super hourglass but like an impossibly small waist that you can only achieve through surgery and like a really big backside but overall thinness is the most valued and of course people will disagree with me because these opinions and these viewpoints are completely subjective and different for every person and i think if you were to google this you would find that here in italy people value thinness as well but i think that that's just mostly women valuing thinness and i completely disagree in my opinion and in my experience Italians really value curves a lot more. They appreciate 
a curvy body. They truly don't mind a bit of a tummy and a bit of things to grab onto. Plastic surgery still is not a big thing. And I honestly think that they're just used to seeing more natural bodies. In America, we're used to seeing a lot of fake bodies, but here, people are mostly natural. Just look at the Italian beaches during the summer. There are real bodies enjoying their vacations in swimsuits and they're sitting on the beach without even being concerned about insecurities. You'll see rolls and cellulite and stretch marks and people just enjoying their vacation. I think here in Italy, beauty goes a lot far beyond just what your body looks like. And that's honestly one of the reasons why I love Italy so much. Moving here has really helped my confidence and self-esteem because it's just different than in the United States. As I was researching this, I found that I disagreed with a lot of the stuff that I was reading and I asked my boyfriend what he thought about all of this. And he said that here in Italy, they have a saying. La bellezza è negli occhi di chi guarda. The beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And so again, I just think this whole topic is so subjective and unique to each individual because we're all gonna have different opinions, right? But I think in Italy, the two key differences are number one, la bella figura. They practice this by having a good attitude and having confidence. And number two, living la dolce vita. They just love their life. They enjoy their life. They do more of what makes them happy. And I wanted to finish this video with a few quotes from Sophia Loren because she has a fabulous outlook and viewpoint on beauty and body confidence and self-love. She once said, Nothing makes a woman more beautiful than the belief that she is beautiful. Beauty is how you feel inside and it reflects in your eyes. It is not something physical. All right, friends, that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Comment down below and let me know what you thought. What did you think of this type of video? And uh, did you learn anything new? I'm curious to hear your opinions and your thoughts on this topic. So looking forward to hearing from you and I will see you again in next week's video. Bye everyone.